Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here. I'm really excited uh, to speak at GitHub Space. Uh, this talk is on security first, the benefits of integrating security tools into your GitHub's workflow. Now, before I get started with uh, my presentations on security tools, and I hope I can, yeah, here's the next slide. Um, I like to ask people what comes to your mind when you're thinking about security. Maybe those are specific tools that pop into your mind of like, oh, I'm using this tool, or I have heard people talk about that tool or specific processes, uh, maybe any buzzword, anything that comes to your mind. It's maybe a rhetoric question. If you want, you can post in the chat. Um, <laughs> I probably won't see it until afterwards. But ultimately, uh, when I ask people this question, they have different types of, correct, of reactions. And usually those reactions are not um, too much on the positive side of experiences. So a lot of people would tell me that security, security in the cloud native space adds to a lot of confusion. It's irritating. It's they don't know where to start. It's difficult. Um, maybe it's focused on specific teams, specific people empowered to, to use security focused tools and similar. So um, there's really like, usually it's, it's not like a yay security kind of answer <laughs> that you would get. And this is exactly why I like talking about integrating security into your existing workflows, such as if you're using GitOps tools, such as Flux CD, you could focus on integrating security tools alongside your existing tools with minimal effort. So this presentation is really like on the why, when, what, who, and how of security, very briefly. Um, <laughs> Then how security relates into your, to your GitOps workflow, um, what are the similarities between your GitOps workflow and your security workflow, and the goals of both of them and the overlap between those goals. And then I'm going to show you how you can integrate your security tools into your existing workflow with a hands-on demo as well. Now, why am I talking to you about this? Uh, if you don't know me, uh, <laughs> I've been working in this space since like 2020. Uh, before that, I was working in different roles in the blockchain space, in the open source blockchain space. Then I joined the cloud native space as developer advocate. Last year, I worked as site reliability engineer. And now this year, I got back into open source developer advocacy at Aqua Security. Now, I also just reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is really exciting. So if you're one of them, big shout out to you. Um, Here's my YouTube channel. As you can see, one of my previous video before all of the conference started was on Flux. So check that out maybe if you're interested. Uh, I also have a weekly, oh, right now not weekly DevOps newsletter. So maybe you're interested in that. But let's talk more about security since I have only limited time and I want you to get the most out of the presentation. So why, when, what, who, and how? Ultimately, it depends like so many other uh, things on, <laughs> on your team, on the different tools that you're using. Uh, and a bunch of different factors. So for instance, um, depending on the size of your team, depending on the nature of your project, you will want to use different security tools. Depending on what tools you're already using, you want to use different security tools. Um, depending on your company's goals and objectives, you will want to use different tools um, for security. So there are really multiple areas that you want to keep in mind before you start integrating security tools. Ultimately, uh, the cloud native space is a very complex area. If you're already familiar with different cloud native tools, um, you might know that there's lots and lots going on. It's a really fast moving space. And whenever you're adding a new tool to your existing stack, it will be another tool that you will have to maintain. So we will have to keep that in mind before you add new tools. Like, yes, you should focus on security for your stack. You should be um, establishing a security first uh, culture, but not on the expense of, of people having to do more than they can actually handle. So which tools should you use? Again, the type of tools that you will choose will depend on those factors. So there's not really one right answer. However, there are different uh, aspects in which security tools really differ. And that's something else you want to keep in mind when you're choosing a tool. So once you decide, that, okay, you want to focus more on security within your workflow, for example, within your GitOps workflow, you want to integrate security tools um, that are running within your cluster or beforehand, um, and you start looking at different security tools, you want to look, for example, at the installation. So different security tools will have different installation options. Some of the tools are CLI first, meaning they are like, while they maybe have ways to install the tool within your cluster, the tool itself and the maintainers will focus on enhancing the CLI experience. So um, anything that goes on for security scanning before you do actually the deployment in the cluster. So before anything touches maybe even your CICD pipelines, um, 
And that's something you want to keep in mind because then um, maybe the tool running with a new cluster will be suboptimal for your use case um, if it's not focused on that use case, right? Uh, the other part is the Kubernetes resource type that those uh, tools use, right? Some tools uh, will use operators, some tools will use uh, just jobs running within your cluster or other Kubernetes resources. So you want to keep in mind what type of resources is that tool actually using? Is it beneficial to us? Is it achieving our goals? Also, you want to make sure that if you're using cloud native tools, if you're running all your workloads on Kubernetes cluster, then you want to make sure that the security tools you're using can integrate with your existing stack inside of your cluster, inside of your cloud native um, application stack. The next thing is, and that's something just to keep in mind, is scan coverage. When you're comparing different tools, they pull from different data sources the information. So, for example, when they check for vulnerabilities. So you want to make sure that you know where the information coming from and kind of what is the experience that other people have with those tools and um, the scan coverage that they provide. Then the next thing is the integrations. So we're talking here solely about open source tools. Like I am the open source developer advocate at Acre. I'm not talking about any enterprise tools. I'm talking about the open source tools. Similar to Flexity, we're talking about open source here. And the more mature, a open source tool gets, uh, the more integration it will have within the ecosystem, right? So either those integrations are built by the community um, or they are built by directly by the maintainers. Now, the last thing is, which kind of relates also to the installation, is the focus, like which uh, user group does the tool focus on? Is it focused on cluster administrators or is it focused um, on engineers using the tool within their terminal, right? It really depends. So you want to keep those differences in mind when you're choosing a tool. Now, when I got started <laughs> with uh, within uh, site reliability engineering last year, uh, we were using different tools. Now, at the time, we were trying out um, GitOps in, in our staging environments. We weren't using it in production, I have to say, honestly. Um, <laughs> but we used those different tools on a day-to-day -day basis. The thing is, then, um, when I got started looking into security tools, and then ultimately, when I got started at Aqua Security, I was like, where are the security tools, right? So uh, there are just some tools that you kind of want to use as part of your stack. And uh, at Aqua, then I discovered Trivi and Tracy. Now I'm going to focus on integrating Trivi within your GitOps workflow in this presentation, and I'm going to show you why and how. Um, Trivi is our open source security scanner, and Tracy is a runtime forensic tool that uses eBPF under the hood. We are not going to talk about it in this presentation. It's a whole other topic. Um, but you ultimately could also integrate Tracy into your GitOps workflow. It works similarly. I'm just using Trivi as like the example and there the Kubernetes resource relating to Trivi. Now, why Trivi? Well, Trivi has lots of different functionalities and um, I will go into detail when to use which in a second. But ultimately, um, within those different functionalities, we just added in-cluster scanning um, with Trivi. So you can install Trivi within your cluster. And that's ultimately what I'm going to focus on in this presentation. Let me just check the time. Okay. So uh, when do you want to use scanning tools? Well, before you before your deployment um, stage of your development lifecycle, for instance, of your different processes, before you want to deploy your workloads, uh, you can do a lot of different scanning within your within your for your resources. You can do file system scanning, you can scan Git repositories, container images, the base images that you're using to build your Docker file, then you can scan your infrastructure as code, and so on and so on. And that can all happen, um, everything you see here, can, I hope you see my mouse, uh, can happen within the CICD pipeline. So before you trigger any deployments for your GitOps workflow, um, they can all happen beforehand, and you could stop the pipeline, you can stop deployments if you, for example, discover critical vulnerabilities or misconfigurations that you should pay attention to within your workflow beforehand. And that workflow might encompass um, on local development machines, somebody scanning a third-party library packages for vulnerabilities, and it's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't use that. We have to like go back and like see what else is out there or it could happen later on in the development um, lifecycle in your pipeline. Now, the thing is, once you go to the deployment stage, you want to make sure that you can actually deploy a security tool also within your cluster um, that is running within your cluster. Uh, and the thing here is that ultimately, once you go past it, like to the deployment stage, you want to automate everything as much as possible. And that's also one of the goals that I'm going to talk about more in a second that also GitOps is addressing, right? You want to empower engineers um, and you want to 
uh, not give them additional, like more work to do manually, right? You want to automate things. And that's only happening if you can actually integrate security tools within your cluster and automate um, the information that they filter for and that they give you. So why Trivi or like how does Trivi really work in your cluster if you're new to Kubernetes? This might be one of your clusters. Just imagine it as like different sections within the cluster, different environments, and they're your different tools. And the Trivi operator is basically a Kubernetes resource that runs within your cluster and that will scan uh, for, for example, vulnerabilities of your workloads. It can do lots of different scans within your cluster automatically, like on a three hour or six hour time, um, time in between, it will scan all of your resources. Um, now, how does it relate now to our GitOps workflow? So I kind of talked about some of the goals that we have uh, with our security tools, but also with our GitOps tools. So let's dive into that in a bit more detail. First of all, we want to empower engineers. And a lot of times when you talk about shifting left and empowering engineers with tools such as uh, Flux or, or security tools, um, we might miss the point by like giving engineers more work to do like that's not the goal right we want to keep in mind that we don't want to give engineers just something else to do in their day-to-day -day job right yes we want to bring security and um, continuous deployment closer to engineers but not on the expense of them having to actually um, invest more and more time into uh, tools and processes that they that is just in addition to their day job. Um, the other thing is that we want to provide visibility and that's really a goal with GitOps, that we want to know when was deployed what, where was it deployed, by whom was it deployed and how was it deployed, right? And this is really correlating to security ultimately because when we find new vulnerabilities in our cluster or when we discover new vulnerable deployments within our cluster, we want to know those things as well, right? Like, yes, um, my auditing tool can tell me, hey, Trivi detected, X new critical vulnerabilities of this new deployment. But then I want to know, okay, there are new vulnerabilities of this deployment. Was there any update that happened uh, since like X time, right? Or uh, who made those updates, right? All of this information can then help me um, debug of like, okay, how did the security issues actually enter into my environment, into my infrastructure? And how can we address kind of the workflow from there um, and prevent it from happening in the future or make our workflow more secure or um, mitigate the, the vulnerability as, as fast as possible. And the other thing is, which I also touch upon that ultimately with GitOps tools, as well as with security tools, you want to make sure that you have Kubernetes resources because that allows easy integration between the different tools. And that's something that I'm also going to show you in my demo in a second, that if everything is Kubernetes based, it's really easy to combine different tools with each other, with each other instead of having to use a complete separate platform. Because you have to think about it, if you're using a separate platform that doesn't integrate, then you will have to look at the platform. You have to configure and maintain the platform separately versus if everything is running um, through one common tool, such as Plexity, then you can ultimately um, monitor everything through the same tool. Um, the other thing is we want to have automated scanning, such as we want to also have automated deployment based on predefined rules. And then the last thing is you want to have lots of different integrations, like I already mentioned. Um, you want to make sure that new tools that you're adding to your stack is ultimately integrating with your existing stack. So here's again how it kind of works work and at really high level if we have flux running within our cluster within a separate namespace and then if we have we want to install the trivia operator within our security namespace so we would ultimately connect um flux running within our cluster we would tell it about our different repositories now those repositories could also be uh external helm registries um with helm charts that we want to deploy for instance and then flux is there responsible to do the continuous reconciliation of those of those resources and make sure they are deployed accurately within our cluster, right? So it's really not us interacting with the cluster. It's just us telling uh, Flex, like with any other tool that you want to deploy through Flex, of like, hey, here's our security stack. Please make sure it's deployed. Um, so it's really not something else. It's just, it's you can use the same kind of um, tools that you're already using to, for example, um, configure and make your deployments happen for your application or for your observability tools. You can do the same uh, for your security tools. So how do we actually go about it? Well, uh, this is just another slide to demonstrate, like you can use Trivi at multiple different areas. Now, again, we will focus on Trivi um, Kubernetes operator. And 
to perform ultimately in cluster scans. And <laughs> you can also use Trivi um, directly like the CLI to do in cluster scans, but this would again be the imperative way of scanning our resources. It wouldn't be an automated declarative way if we use the CLI. Like this would be the CLI commands that you could use to, for example, do cluster scanning, namespace scanning, and so on um, for, for example, vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. Now, you can also use Helm and in my demo, in a second, we are ultimately using um, Helm to, or like the Helm deployment, but through Flux to deploy to deploy uh, Trivi, the Trivi operator inside of our cluster. So here's the demo. Uh, I have here a multiple node Kubernetes cluster, and I'm just going to connect it through a tool called K9S. Um, I hope it's opening up. <laughs> Let's give it a second. The so demo demo gods are not with me. Um, so while this is trying to open up and I hope it's going to open up, oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I would show you the other resources, but it already opened up. So that's great. So here are my different namespaces within my custom. Now I have here my application namespace where my application deployment is supposed to happen, will happen. Then I have here my flux system namespace and here I have flux the, through the bootstrap command installed, just normal flux controllers running within you. And then going back, I have my monitoring namespace with Grafana and Prometheus installed. Um, and then I have my Trivi system namespace. Now in the Trivi system namespace, I want to install, first of all, um, Trivi as like the Trivi operator, as well as um, the Trivi exporter to ac also access the vulnerabilities from the Trivi operator itself. Now, how do I do that? Well, um, if you want to deploy an application through Flex, for example, you could either do it through the Flex CLI, or you can, or you can define like a Kubernetes resource um, which is like a custom resource to Flux, um, where you, for example, specify the um, repository, the Git repository that you want to use, and then which part is going to get deployed. So I'm just going to give this manifest to my cluster, to Flux, um, and then Flux can go ahead and install the application. Now, here I tried to play around with it. That's why this deployment is right now pending. Uh, but ultimately, here's the other deployment from before running within my application namespace. Now, I want to do exactly the same thing with my uh, Trivi operator and my Trivi exporter. Now, in this case, you would define two resources with Flex. You would define the Helm repository that you're using, and then the Helm release that uses the Helm repository defined up here. And you're defining, like, basically, where is the Helm chart actually live? Where's the Helm registry that we're pulling the chart from? And then you define, okay, you want to use a Trivi operator chart. And the same would go for um, for the Trivi exporter. And I can give, again, those two different resources. I can give it to Flex, and then Flex knows where to pull the information from and install um, my resources within the cluster. So those two are managed through Flex, the Trivi exporter part and the Trivi operator part. Now I can go to Helm, Helm release, and then I can see the two Helm releases up here, and um, Helm... What was it called again? Helm repository. I want to say Helm registry repositories. And I can see my Helm repositories as well. Now, once you have installed the Trivi operator, and this is just, again, like through another resource, right? Through another Kubernetes resource that you give to Flex inside of the cluster, um, it will then do, for example, vulnerability reports. So you can scan for vulnerability reports like any other um, like any other custom resource definition within your cluster. So I'm just saying, okay, uh, kubectl get vulnerability reports um, and basically across all of my namespaces. And I can see here, these are the different vulnerability reports. So I, for example, have um, my different deployments for my application. And here I have installed, um, for this application, I have to install the React app uh, with the image 9.0.0 and 7.0.0. Now it scanned both of them for vulnerabilities. So as you can see, the old deployment had five critical vulnerabilities, the new deployment has three critical vulnerabilities. So you can see the number of vulnerabilities that those deployments have um, through, through the vulnerability reports, which is just done automatically through, um, through the Trivi operator that's living within your cluster. So anything like once you define the resources that Flux has to know about and you give it to Flux, um, Flux will ultimately make the deployment happen automatically. Um, and, and from there onwards, you, you can look at it, but you don't have to look at it, right? Like this all happens within your custom. However, obviously, um, right now as it is, you will have to look at it directly. Like you would have to query, for example, for the vulnerability reports and the other reports within your custom. 
So what you want to do instead and something else you want to think about as like last point is the different integrations that you can make happen. So I'm not going to show this in this demo, but I set it up in an other demo is um, a Cortana dashboard, which basically accesses the metrics from the trivia operator and then visualizes the number of vulnerabilities in the application namespace. Um, like the total number of vulnerabilities for that deployment and then the number of vulnerabilities defined by severity and then also the entire vulnerabilities inside of our entire cluster. So through visualizing everything within our Grafana dashboard, we can then, for example, set up alerting, and we don't actually have to look at it all the time. We can just look at the alerts of, for example, our critical vulnerabilities, or if things happen. And again, this is all post-deployment stage. Like everything pre-deployment stage um, is obviously like you configuring your infrastructure as code, you defining your resources and everything. And then, but then once you deploy them, you don't want to have to do things manually again and set up things manually. Um, the same you could do for, for Tracy. Now, I'm not going to show you Tracy live in this demo, but Tracy is ultimately um, also something that you can deploy through a Helm chart. And then you can gather the logs that are posted from Tracy uh, that's reporting the different processes that are happening within your cluster. And then you can also visualize Tracy and the logs that you get from Tracy um, within, uh, for example, your Grafana dashboard. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so just the takeaways. Um, ultimately, security goals are GitHub's goals. There's a high overlap between like making our deployments visible, seeing whether or not, like, how secure are your deployments, or how is our security chain of our cluster, of our resources, like the number of vulnerabilities changing over time. And that's something like visibility that you want to gain into your deployment and um, through using additional tools. Now, getting started with security tools has long-term benefits. You don't have to be an expert from day one if I can get started with security tools. So can you um, let me know if I can help or we can help with anything um, at the Aqua Open Source team. Now, Trivi is a really comprehensive and versatile security scanner. Now, there are other scanners out there, so I suggest you take a look, see what works for you. Um, yeah. I think questions, you can just reach out to me on Twitter. <laughs> um, um, awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks for being on time. Um, so yes, and speaking of questions, we already have some in the Slack channel. So okay. um, I will remind everybody, um, yes, if you're watching on YouTube, which you would be, um, please make sure you join our Slack channel because we and our speakers will continue to monitor your questions um, throughout the day and throughout the week. Um, and yes, there's a pretty interesting question there. So Anais, uh, if you have a second, you can uh, go and answer that and we really appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. it's so great to see you again. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah.